What is up everyone, it's your boy Infrared. Welcome to the Scott Reports. Today I'm bringing you an anime review of Mob Psycho 100, episode 6. And today was kinda sorta a laid back episode. And it needed to be after that explosive battle we had between Mob and Taruki last week. And this week we are focusing on Risu, Mob's younger brother, who I still hold on to my prediction that he is going to be a villain at some point in this series. Maybe before the episodes that we get of this anime, or probably definitely in the manga by now. I'm not reading the manga, but anyway, you can kind of see the building blocks of this happening for Risu, but probably more along the lines of him being an accidental villain. And what I mean by that is, think of Akira with um, Tetsuo and Kaneido, or even the movie Chronicle. I can kind of see that happening with Risu where when he starts to get control of his psychic abilities that he does manifest in this episode, I can see him losing control or just deciding to lash out against anybody who did him wrong or anybody that tries to hurt Mob. Or if you even want to go down the hole a little bit deeper, think about it, that Risu with abilities is now essentially the kid that has everything. He was always smart. He was always popular, ex athletic, etc. Now you add the powers that he always envied Mob for into his hands, and it's nothing that can stop him, and that usually leads to the type of thing that turns people into a villain, as he's always held some type of resentment inside of his heart for Mob, and we really see that this episode, and that want for him to be what Mob is, and it may be even better just to see that little darkness of him saying that if I had this ability, I can always do things even better than my brother. Or maybe if it's just to protect Mob, because he does have a sense of wanting to protect Mob. Those type of things can easily send somebody down the wrong path. And I can easily also see that happening with Risu as well. As again, he does manifest his psychic abilities. He can also now see Dimple. So you can throw that into there as well, because if I remember correctly, Dimple was trying to actually possess Mob's body. So now that... Risu has this ability, he has that resentment, he has that little bit of darkness in his heart. That same weakness might be enough for Dimple to actually possess Risu and cause a clash between him and Mob. I don't know, the possibilities are endless, but I do know that Risu will be a villain at some point. I mean, I can almost bank on that happening. But now, as far as the episode itself, it seems like things are back to normal. Reagan's back kind in people. But there is a nice little point in this episode where he is talking to an uh, understandably scared mob who said, you know, I went unconscious and I couldn't control myself. So I don't, I'm not even sure I want these abilities anymore, but you know, Reagan kind of pats him on the head and say, look, at the very least, you need to keep using these powers to help me and to help other people. So that was nice. And there's also a point in the episode where he actually confronts Risu um, afterwards where he says, hey, you're mob's little brother, right? So don't you have powers too? But of course, Risu go ahead and he goes ahead and brushes him off and says, get out of here, you fraud. So that was pretty nice too because it seems that maybe Reagan has a little bit of something if he was able to identify that Risu had abilities or maybe it was just sheer luck. On the other side of things also, a telepathy club decides to keep using Mob to find more espers to build their cause. So he's running around with them and then there's also the appearance while they're doing this of a certain hooded man who is also in the opening and I'm pretty sure he's going to end up being our next villain once things go down and we get past the bridge that we're dealing with in this arc with Risu. So in this episode we see that Risu is part of the Dark Student Council. Well actually they're just the regular student council but with their leader Shinji and the way things went down in this episode I'm pretty sure their intentions are nothing but pure as their first order of business is to try to reprimand delinquents. And, she, and of course, Risu is all for this because he wants to keep Mob safe no matter what. So he goes ahead and agrees to help them put down the hammer on this order. What's also interesting is that Risu is approached by someone from a club called the Awakening Club, which was kind of weird because they confused him for Mob. And they took him in and introduced him to who they are and more people who have latent psychic abilities that they're trying to unlock and they offer to help him unlock his powers even better. And this club is also ran by a man who doesn't have abilities but wants to be an esper as well. So you can kind of see the connection between Ritsu and this man in this club as well as Ritsu even says, he's a fraud, he doesn't have any abilities, but if he can help me lock what's in, within me with these powers, then I'll use them for whatever I'm worth. And that kind of leads me to wonder about things as well because there was a point in the episode where one of the people from this club told Risu to stop trying to be normal, stop trying to be like your brother because you're not. 
So I wonder if they always knew about Risu and it wasn't a mistake for him being mobbed. Did they know that it was him all along? Or was it just purely an accident? But either way, again, I don't trust this Dark Council and I don't trust this Awakening Club either as we have to have an overall nemesis somewhere because I think Taruki was just um, a fight that someone's just going to end up being probably like a friend or uh, at the very least someone that's going to help mob and possibly Risu in the future of this series. So the student council's plan is to frame Onigawara. I probably butchered that. But he was the person that was part of the gang that um, Taruki wh whipped up and he's a humbled man right now. He's looking for um, the person that defeated Taruki so he can make them the shadow leader, which we know is Mob, but they're not aware of that as well. He actually bumps into Mob and apologizes for what happened to him. And also, I believe he's going to end up being part of the Body Improvement Club as he was approached by the leader when he was looking for him. Basically, he told him, step off a of Mob. We're going to protect him no matter what. But you know what? We see something in you. Why don't you join us as well? As he starts training with the Body Improvement Club, and I can see him being a character that probably is going to end up being a support character at some point in the series and it'll be probably be a good look i'm liking all the characters that we're running into anyway risu and shinji the leader of the student council is going to frame him for stealing like recorder or something anyway it was something that he stole from girls and they basically labeled him as like a thief and a pervert and he's already a delinquent so he kind of has a bad rep to begin with but this makes him even worse as he's now hated and shunned by all the girls and everybody around him even a girl that he grew up with who vowed that she will always be on his side she thinks he's repulsive and gross as well now he has that shun on his back and perhaps mob and the body and improvement club will get him out of this mess but also with risu even though he is doing this he feels a big sense of regret for setting this student up for something that he didn't do. It was all by Shinji's um, planning because the biggest thing that we're pulling out of this episode is people's expectations of their siblings. Like this dude Shinji in the student council, his older brother is better by him by all means. So he's doing whatever he can do to elevate his status and be looked at in a better light, even if somebody else has to take the fall. And he even kind of calls out Risu in this episode by saying that you're not the person that you act like you are. Everybody sees you as this perfect person, but we know you're not that. So again, dark tones coming in from here. And later on in the day, after his student has been pretty much shunned and blacklisted by everybody in the school, Risu does feel resent because, you know, it's not right. Deep down, he's a good person. He just wants what Mob has. So in his anger, his resentment for what he did, he actually throws a spoon. And we see that the spoon was mangled and charred up into like a bending position, showing that he does have abilities as the Awakening Club is like, hey, this kid might have potential after all. But again, going back to the point of, you know, expectations and trying to be like others, we know Ritsu loves Mob, but at the same time, he's, you might as well say he's jealous of Mob's abilities, and that is kind of what's driving his dark intentions, that he would probably be the perfect person if he had Mob's abilities as well. So we got that weighing in with him doing what he needs to do, or he feels he needs to do to get that power. And that was the episode. That was the episode overall. And we're going to continue this tomorrow as or next week. I'm sorry, not tomorrow. I wish it was tomorrow. We're going to continue that next episode with this arc with Risu. And once again, Mob Cycle 100 bringing the hype. A very good episode. There are a couple of things that I did want to point out in the episode, though, that I kind of noticed. And one I kind of touched on already with this Awakening Club coming up out of nowhere. I just feel that it's more behind them. And maybe they are trying to find people like Risu and lock their abilities after all. Which makes me wonder, like... Is being an Esper, like, is it Bloodline, or is that everybody have it within them and all it needs to be unlocked is to be unlocked? That's possibly what happened with Risu, but also with Reagan mentioning that Mob was his brother, and because of that, he should have abilities as well. I'm really interested in diving in and seeing how that worked. So let me know what you guys thought of the episode. I'll definitely like to hear your thoughts and predictions on this as well. And if you liked the video, go ahead and drop it a like. If you want to hear more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. This is not a shortage of content for you to indulge on on this channel. And as I always say, you guys can be anywhere on YouTube right now. But you chose to listen to me. And I really appreciate that. So thanks for stopping by. On that note, it's your boy Infrared signing out. See you soon.